I'm going to go into new and I'm going to create a new item. And I'm going to start with inventory parts just to kind of simplify the process here. And I'll create a new item and we'll call this Has Avocado. Okay, so if any of you are from California or San, San Diego, you probably deal with a lot of Has Avocados. Um, so we have here the cost. Now, this cost is my what I call my item cost, not necessarily my historical cost. I want to make sure we separate the difference between a item cost and a historical cost. And then we'll talk about that uh, briefly when we actually create a couple of transactions with that. So let's say this is a 50 cent cost and then the sales price. Okay, let's say I want to make 33% margin on it. Okay, so real quick, this is a one of the things that people get a little bit confused about is the concept of uh, markup and margin, okay? So let's say, for example, I'm in charge of cr uh, creating my items and, and setting my prices, right? I mean, and, and, and setting your prices is probably one of the most important tasks you will ever have. So if my cost in this case is going to be uh, 50 cents, okay? And my profit, or let's call it our, our margin, okay? Our margin, let's say it's a, a dollar amount so let's say it's 25 cents okay then my sales price should be in this case the sum of these two okay now the one area that people get a little bit confused about is well it's is this what is the margin and what is the markup okay so let me just uh, I'm gonna hit drop drop down here okay right so in this case uh, the margin let's just call it here markup the margin it for this item is um, equal to the margin divided by the sales price okay that's that's a that's our margin percent okay but our markup is going to be our margin amount my gross margin amount divided by the cost and these are areas that uh, honestly e even accountants um, have a, a challenge confusion so what ends up happening is if you don't have clear understanding on what's margin and what's markup when the user is going to now create uh, the sales price and they're told for example they're told hey i need you to have 30 percent margin on the on on this product okay Th there is no possible way that we can just plug you know the percentage of 30 percent uh in in quickbooks pro or quickbooks premiere you would have to have quickbooks enterprise to be able to just plug the 30 percent margin in there so i'm going to go to edit markup this is a quickbooks enterprise only feature and then i'll put into margin i'll put 30 percent and then i hit okay and then quickbooks is going to based on a 30 percent margin is going to calculate what my sales price is however let's forget for a second that we um let me just i'm going to put here all this let's forget for a second that we are work, we, we have quickbooks enterprise and we're work, working with quickbooks pro premiere or accountant that doesn't have this margin markup calculation the only way i can calculate um markup from cost into the sales price is by using a formula so for example if i know what my targeted markup is don't know my margin yet but if i know my targeted markup okay um, what i can do is i can put the sales price just type 0.50 and then I can do times like a formula 1.3. So multiplying any cost times 1.3 is the way to figure out my sales price from margin. Okay, so by doing that, I now get a markup of a 30%. Okay, so that's a really important piece when it comes to calculating uh, markup and, and margin. Okay, um, you know, there, there's, a, there, there's a different formula we can use uh, for margin, but I don't want to get too much in detail into it. But, um, but that is how we can use, without QuickBooks uh, Enterprise, we can use the formula to calculate the sales price from a markup, okay? Anyway, um, so if I'm working with QuickBooks Enterprise, I can just click on Edit Markup and plug my markup percentage or my margin percentage and arrive to that desired amount, okay? So that's the only little part I wanted to uh, speak when it comes to those two. So now we have a cost and we have a sales price. And then these are the item costs and the item sales price not the historical cost and sales price. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay here. And then I'm gonna create a couple of bills. I'll create two bills. Uh, let me just find a vendor here. Okay, so I'll just create a random vendor here. And I'm gonna create two bills, uh, one for one vendor, where I'm gonna buy 100 of these for 49 cents. And this happens often, right? We'll, we'll buy something at a different price than our actual suggested price based on our item list. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then I'll go ahead and do a new bill and I'll do another vendor. 
okay? And then I'm also going to purchase the same product. Let's say I'm gonna purchase 75 of them, but this time it's gonna be at a different cost, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, save and close. So what I want to show you is if I, uh, if I go into my item list, okay, and I look at my average cost, this number often differs from uh, the index cost or the item cost because the average cost is based on historical transactions, uh, not based on the item that's there. So that item is only, that cost only activates itself or it's only useful for suggesting it when you're doing a purchase order or when you're doing a bill. But at the end of the day, the, the true historical price is gonna be driven by transactions, not driven by this cost. I'm gonna show you something else that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and sell a couple of these. So I'm gonna create a couple of invoices. And I'll just pick a couple of customers here at random. And um, I'll select here on the item code. I'll select the item and let's say I'm gonna sell uh, this person 50, at 69 cents, okay? And I'll hit save. Let me take out the email later box there. I'll hit save a new. And then I'm gonna sell here 96, the same product. I'm gonna put here a different customer, okay? Just close that there, okay? And let's say I'm gonna sell this one for uh, 63 cents, okay? So I kinda wanna show you why I'm doing this, there, there is a purpose for this. So I'm gonna hit uh, save and close. So one of the challenges that we have is in QuickBooks, we really can't control uh, whether the users are selling the product under or under margin or markup, we can't. We can monitor it, however, by going into the reports, sales, sales by item summary, okay? And let me go ahead and hit customize report and get rid of these additional items here, so that way I'm only looking at my average sales price. So now we're seeing what our average sales price on our Haas Avocado is. Now one of the things that QuickBooks doesn't have, it's a way for me to compare what my average sales price, this is the actual price that I've uh, sold it for, versus what my item sales price is. However, I do have a little bit of a trick up my sleeve. What I'll do is I'm gonna go to reports, list, and click on item price list. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and just select all the items here, even the even the the, the active ones. Okay, um, even the inactive ones in this case. Hit OK. That way, I'm just kind of seeing what my customer will see. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna I'm going to hit customize report, go to filters, and then only show my inventory parts, just to kind of simplify here the process. Inventory parts, and then what I'll do is I'm gonna drag the the price column and I'm gonna put it here towards the left. I know this is kind of a weird thing, but you'll you'll see you'll you'll get the point in a minute. Okay, and then I'm gonna make this report uh, as small as possible, make it a little bit tighter here, like this, and I'm gonna actually literally put it next to. <laughs> I know this is a funny workaround. I'm going to put it next to uh, my item price list. Uh, that way I can actually compare uh, the average price that I sold it for uh, versus the actual uh, index price. Now this is just a coincidence that the item price I had was 65 cents and the average price came out to 65 cents. But if I actually go back and, and change some of these items, a sales price, so let's say I sold this one for 62 cents, okay? And then I'm gonna put that this one I sold for 59 cents and again I, I don't have a way to know exactly what the lowest possible price I should be selling this thing as so we may have to use tools like this where we can compare right hand in hand I can see look um, that my target price what I wanted to sell it for is 65 cents however what um, what I'm historically selling it for in terms of average price is 60 cents so this is a, actually a kind of a neat way to compare it hand in hand now if you wanted to go much deeper into this, you could export both of these into Excel, copy and paste both price tables next to it and just check and double check um, by doing a formula and you can actually compare, you know, whether my average sales price and my historical, oh, my, my average historical sales price versus my target sales price uh, matches. The other side of the coin here would be a uh, cost. So I'm gonna go here to customize report and um, I'm actually gonna add here uh, cost to goods sold and average cost to goods sold, these two here, and then I'll hit, I'll hit okay. So now I have my uh, my average cost to goods sold. This is the one uh, that matters here, my average cost to goods sold, because I can actually grab from, my, from the right side, from my item price list, I can make sure that I include 
my cost here as part of my report. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that cost all the way to the left, okay? Make a, this a little bit smaller, lower this, and then I can also do the same type of comparison. I can actually take a look if my cost in my on my item price list versus my uh, cost in my in my uh, in my sales by item uh, summary report. I can also see if I am on target or off target. Okay, so this is like just sort of one way we can do this a little bit interesting.